Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And, you know, it always seems to be amazing how the pictures that appear in media just seem to speak volumes. And I think this picture here with President Xi Jinping of China and that of the Saudi uh, Prince Saeed Gash, uh, Manyad meeting together over financial economics uh, and defense of democracies, uh, as, it, as it speaks about here in the article, nuclear with China's help. Uh, the article is written by Israel uh, Kasnet and is certainly concerned that Saudi Arabia may end up becoming a nuclear state. And of course, Pakistan had always promised to back the Saudis um, in the event of war because they are nuclear and the Saudis help fund their, their uh, project for going nuclear. But now the Saudis are no longer interested in sitting on the sidelines with all the changes that are going on in the Middle East, especially after the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain both entered into a covenant with Israel. Not to say that the Saudis don't already have somewhat uh, relation, good relationships with Israel. After all, there are Israeli warplanes sitting on airports in uh, military airports in Saudi Arabia uh, in the event a war breaks out with Iran. And uh, but again, like I said, the, the the picture itself speaks volumes. There is a lot of things changing in the Middle East. If you remember, it was also the same Prince Saeed who had gone to uh, Iraq back before uh, Soleimani was assassinated and was trying to meet with him in order to bring about some type of a peace deal between Iran and Saudi Arabia. And of course, China has a very good uh, relationships with Iran as well as they have with Israel. So don't be fooled by all these pictures that we see. But, you know, you can always paint the picture to make it look like there's a lot of uh, unstable uh, situations there. Like, for example, also here, CNS News putting out their article here yesterday, Russia, China, Iran, and others begin joint military drills in southern Russia. Russia and China this week kicked off a large-scale military exercise in southern Russia, along with troops from several other countries, including Iran, all at a time when all three countries in relations with the United States are chilly. The Kav 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 Kavkaz 2020 drills are running from September 21st to the 26th. And of course, uh, there's a lot of countries, not just those three countries involved, but we also have Belarus is involved in this, uh, in these drills there, uh, Burma, Armenia, uh, Pakistan, all involved in these naval drills, and as well as China. This is over by the Black and Caspian Seas. So what are they getting ready for? What are they getting ready for? Is it going to be a staged war in the Middle East? It's kind of interesting. Look at here. You know, we, we keep bringing this issue up too. Israeli rabbis say he's already holding meetings with the Messiah. This article is on August the 3rd, but earlier this year, this very rabbi here that you see pictured um, has claimed to be in conferences with, his, his name is Rabbi Chaim Kedavesky. He's a very well-renowned rabbi there in Israel said he's been in communications with the Messiah. And there is a lot of excitement in Israel right now about the Messiah. We're seeing a lot of articles pop up ever since this one popped up back earlier this year. At least I say this one, that's where the uh, uh, Rabbi Chaim uh, Kanaviski, where he had spoke about that. And then we get articles like this. Top rabbis look at signs. Messiah is coming. It seems to be that these rabbis are really wanting something to take place. They're wanting for the Messiah to be there this year. And, of course, 2019, there were rabbis already saying that the Messiah was coming that year. And some might argue, well, Israel's 
year goes from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah, which would be around September, October to the following year. But of course, Rosh Hashanah has already come and gone, so 2019 didn't quite work out. Jews for Judaism, though, you know, there's some qualifications for a Messiah. First of all, he must be Jewish. Now, of course, keep in mind, that's because Jesus was never accepted as the Mashiach. I believe the Mashiach has already come, so what's this guy going to be? Whoever he might be that's in the waiting that the rabbi is claiming to be speaking to. He must be a member of the tribe of Judah. He must be a direct male descendant of King David and King Solomon. He must gather the Jewish people from exile, return them to Israel. Now, I find that one interesting right there. Must gather the exiles and return them to Israel. Do you know how much it is being stated right now? And they're pushing. They have done secret. I, I shared that with you. Secret meetings with rabbinical communities in Europe telling them, return to Israel. Even if you got to go live out there in the in the uh, in Judea and Samaria, which would be the West Bank, right? They're wanting the Jewish people to come home. Then it said he must rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Now I did a little poking and prodding because you know there's some different people with different opinions out there that Israel's you know the rabbis are wanting to uh, disclose who their Messiah is. Whether or not that's going to be the case or not, who knows? It didn't happen last year. I think even in 2018, they were saying he was coming. So will 2020 be the year? I have no idea. But those are some of the things that he would have to meet. Some of the criteria. He will rule at a time of world peace. He will rule at a time when the Jewish people will observe God's commandments. And I guess for the Gentiles, you'll be under Noahite laws. He will rule at a time when all the people will come to the knowledge and serve one God. Hmm. That's so interesting. You know, and what all of these criteria are best stated in the book of Ezekiel 37, chapter 37, verses 24 to 28, which clearly identify that Jesus Christ, he was the fulfillment of Ezekiel 37, 24 to 28. Uh, anyway, but those are the prerequisites that their Messiah would have to have. And Jesus fulfills every single bit of it, but you know, that's beside the point. Nobody seems to believe that. But this video right here did catch my attention. This came out three days ago. And this is uh, actually posted by Off Grid Desert Farming. Uh, actually, they actually listen to this channel. That's kind of interesting. But anyway, uh, I know who Paul and Adrian are. And uh, but I want to play this video for you. This rabbi is extremely excited. It's right on the eve of Rosh Hashanah. And listen to what he says. Of course, I guess it's in Hebrew. So for most of you, it'd be a little bit more difficult. But you can read the, the uh, what he says on here. And I'll, maybe I'll highlight it as we go. <laughs> Day of judgment. Blessed be Hashem's name. Now we're reaching the moment we have waited for for thousands of years. For thousands of years now, the people of Israel are waited for the Mashiach to come. Some Sadakim, which are righteous ones, have called me and asked me to spread this message. At all the time, we should ask for these three things. For the region, for the, excuse me, for the reign of the dynasty of David, for the rebuilding of the temple. Regarding the first, Rosh Hashanah, we crown Hashem king and ask him to reign over us. It is reign be revealed, Hashem be our king. Notice that. It is reign be revealed, Hashem be our king. Now he's mentioned already in here that the righteous had contacted him to put this out. Some of the tzadikim, tzadik, which means the word righteous, righteous ones. In other words, it's plural, Sadachim. So it's, you know, who are these rabbis that are asking him to put this out? Let's listen a little more. Ask him to reign, that his reign be revealed. That was what got my attention right there, that his reign be revealed. Hashem be our king. This connects with the second, with the reign of the descendants of King David. 
as it is written, they shall seek Hashem their God and David their king. All the time we have to ask over and over again, don't forget. Every time you do a mitzvah, say this is the merit, let the Mashiach come. May the Mashiach be revealed and may the temple be rebuilt. Every time you recite a blessing, say this merit, may the Mashiach come. All right, so the point being, and I'll put a link to this for you. The point being, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of anticipation. You know, I reached out to a good friend of mine in Israel and asked about, about this, you know, because you see so many things going on. The, the rabbi's saying he's me, meeting with the Messiah. You see the excitement with this rabbi here, and he's claiming that the righteous there in Israel are, 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 are asking the people to be reciting these prayers here. You know, it's like they're having anticipation or something major uh, expectation. And he said to me that the people, they don't, or the rabbis, they don't have much time left. They got to do something. And especially with the elections and the condition they're in. But he also mentioned too about the building of the third temple. A friend of his uh, is involved in that project. And he mentioned something about underground road or bridge being built or would be built, don't really, uh, didn't quite understand if it would be or or is being built or whatever the case may be. But, um, but the fact that he actually said that the rabbis don't have much time left, they got to do something. And I know there's always been talked to before of wars, you know, that the Messiah would come and bring peace. Kind of like what one of our friends, uh, the intelligence uh, community had shared with us our sources there that um, the Mahadi was already in waiting. And they're just waiting for the right time. Wow, all these different Arabic nations to go right there on the verge, the, right near the tip of going into civil war. Then they'd bring the Mahadi out. So, Will the Jewish Messiah be revealed this year, as they claimed he was going to be revealed last year? I have no idea. But there does seem to be a lot of excitement. And as one friend of ours there in Israel said, they're running out of time. They don't have a whole lot more time left. But things are definitely heating up. Situation with Iran and Syria. Of course, they still want Damascus to fall. Don't forget, as we were told, you got to watch Damascus, watch Rome. You know, that's another thing. Thinking about Rome, and I, I brought this up again just as a reminder. Remember when the Pope, the mysterious disappearance of the Vicar of Christ, his title there as Vicar? Not that I've ever agreed that the, any Pope has ever been a substitute for Jesus Christ. He is truly the one and only Messiah. But when the Pope renounced his title as Vicar of Christ, he did not allow that to be upon him. A lot of people looked at that and said, well, this is a humble man, humble Catholic minister who is just really trying to be a good man, to be an example to the Catholic Church. No. As I said before, I'll say it again, it was a sign to the world that he had placed himself underneath Israel's Messiah, which to me is an antichrist. He has taken away that title from the Catholic Church so that Israel could bring forth the Messiah and they could bring about a one world religion. One faith. This is why they already have a Mahdi. It's all artificially put together. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News Live. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your support of this work. Don't forget, our website, by the way, is going to be undergoing some changes here fairly soon. So, uh, But anyway, IsraeliNewsLive.org is our website as of right now. Uh, well, it'll still be the same website. It's not going to change names or anything, but uh, we're going to be having uh, iConnectFX.com. That is EventMasterFX.com. Same name. It's just they have change the name I connect FX um, will be working with us to embed our broadcast within 
our website itself, making things a little bit easier. You won't just have the one video up there. You'll have uh, a panel of them on there. So we're kind of looking forward to that change um, to be made. Our webmaster is working for us, uh, put that together for us so that it'll be a better experience for you guys as well. But anyway, thank you for your support. You can donate online or via mail right there on the right-hand side.